As you know, my name is Vivica C. Cox, and I am Durham's drag diva. A lot of people, when they think of Durham, they think of the rich racial and cultural history of Durham. They think of Black Wall Street, and they think of North Carolina Central University. But they oftentimes don't think about the queer nightlife and the LGBTQ scene in Durham, North Carolina. They don't think of the activism that has led to Durham's rich history and where we are now. And most of all, most people don't think about the power company which closed in the 1990s. You see, the power company was the home and the hope of all queer nightlife for the Southeast. So you don't think of Durham as the place that people literally pack their bags and travel for a weekend to go have a good time if they live in Atlanta or DC or Richmond. But that was actually the case. But because Durham's reputation took a turn and people started to see it as too black and too dangerous, people stopped coming. And there was a huge shift. But we're not going to talk about gentrification. What we are going to talk about is that hunger that people had for a safe place to be themselves. We are going to talk about what it means to live in Durham today. And we are going to talk about drag, or else I wouldn't have put on heels today. <laughs> Trust me, I would not have put on heels today. A lot of people, when they think of drag right now, they get their information from the lens of RuPaul's Drag Race. A lot of people think that that is drag, and that is what we do and how drag happens. That is not all of drag. That is all through one human's lens. And oftentimes, we are measured by how great we are and determined whether or not we can get on to RuPaul's Drag Race. Well, that is not what we're going to talk about. In North Carolina, drag has a very, very pageant bent to it. And if you don't know what pageants are, watch Miss America and then add gay men, and then you have drag pageantry. <laughs> That's basically what drag pageantry is. But I was never given a chance to gain access to that version of drag. But instead, I was given an opportunity because I decided to have one drink at one bar before going to see one documentary, Blackfish. Don't go see it unless you are really in the mood to feel horrible about the world. Not joking. <laughs> and one owner of one establishment looked at me and said, do you know any local drag queens who can open for Manila Luzon, a RuPaul's Drag Race queen? And I said, being who I am and being as bold as I am, I can do it. Now, please believe, I had never actually been on a professional stage as a drag performer. And I just looked at the owner of this establishment and I said, I'll open for one of the most popular drag queens that has ever existed in the US. <laughs> and that person looked at me and said, as one should look at me and do. And I said, I can do it. And they looked at me and they said, show me a picture. So obviously I pulled out pictures of me at Halloween and I showed them to this owner of the bar and they looked at me and said, well, if you look that good on Halloween, I can only imagine what you would look like. So, given that opportunity, I created what is called the House of Cox. And we are now the most popular drag family in North Carolina. <laughs> this was all in 2013 that this got started. But when I was given the opportunity to open for Manila Luzon, I subsequently was given the opportunity to create my own show, to do it differently, to run events on my own. But I made a commitment. That commitment was that we would do this differently, that we would be accepting of all humans, regardless of their shape, size, race, or whatever. And so we did, and we put consent at the forefront. The problem is, and the reason why we did this, when you engage with nightlife, whether you're queer or not, there's a hierarchy. You are judged for how beautiful you are. If you are a certain gender or set of genders, you are concerned for your safety. And if you are queer, that is the only place where you might meet someone to go on a date and you have the issue of not feeling like a full 
valid human. So all of our shows, we start with the concept of consent so that everyone feels like they will be safe and embraced. And if you don't believe me, please believe that I have kicked people out of bars before. I have looked at them and I have publicly shamed them, very politely. <laughs> very politely did I publicly shame them, but I did, and I removed them from the bar. That's because I have the privilege of being a visible human who is physically large and very commanding when I'm on a stage. But please believe that it's not just me. There are all of these other people who have bought into the idea that consent matters. Yes, I recognize that the passion of the House of Cox is social justice and consent, and we have just made it through a week of Brett Kavanaugh. But trust and believe that you all can come to a, one of our events and feel completely safe. When you think about visibility for people who are engaging with queer nightlife, with the images always being of cis, gay, white men who go to the gym 12 times a week <laughs> and eat 200 calories a day, <laughs> you start to feel like you're not pretty. And I really struggled with that because I'm pretty. Thank you. <laughs> I was not fishing, but <laughs> now that you're on the line, I truly just was not going to buy into that. You see, I used to engage in queer nightlife and wonder why I felt so horrible about myself. I love to tell the story about the time I went to New York City with a friend, and he was small and white and pretty, and everyone was paying attention to him. But then we went to LA and people liked me instead and he had an attitude about it and I felt no remorse. <laughs> but when it comes to the House of Cox, we take our time to make sure that everyone sees the diversity of all of the performers and the magic that there is from having that diversity. From pe with people from all over the world, immigrants included, with people who were trans, gender non-conforming, who were cis, who identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, queer, and shockingly straight. The people in the audience, when they see that, they think I could do something real. Because they see drag as something real. Thank God, or else I wouldn't get a paycheck. I am thankful that they see it as something real because it gives us the opportunity to shape their experience. I want you to think about those times where you felt truly and purely at peace and comfortable and fully accepted. Was it at church? Was it sitting at someone's kitchen counter watching them bake you a pie? Or was it at a friend's home? You see, for a lot of queer folks, those places don't exist. And queer nightlife becomes their church, becomes that kitchen counter, and becomes that friend's home, where for the first time in that week, they have a chance to breathe and be themselves. Think about a life where you wouldn't have those experiences, where you were fully yourself, where you were able to be authentic. And then you start to realize why it's so important for drag performers to make space for other humans. I know that there are many ways to approach nightlife. I do. But I believe the way we do it is what's best for the Durham queer community right now. But we're not so presumptuous to think that we are the only people who will ever get it right. We hope we are not the only people who ever get it right. And if the queer community takes the time and tells us we have stopped doing it the right way, we would fail them if we did not bend the, to their wishes and do it the way it needed to do for the future. I'm very thankful for all of the performers in the House of Cox. They've helped us become who we are today. And I'm mostly thankful for the Durham community for embracing us and giving us space to do things the way we do. I mean, you can look at Pride and see that there was a shift in the way that that 
happened with some influence from the House of Cox, obviously. But I look to every single person in this room, and I want you to take a moment to reflect. Maybe you're not a large black person who walks exceptionally well in heels and wears a sequin dress <laughs> better than anyone you've ever seen before. <laughs> but you are someone who has privilege. I don't care where you're from. Whether it's your ability to advocate for others or to bake a pie, you have the ability to do something good for people in this world. I consider myself an activist because I encourage other activists to go and do good work. But I'm looking to you for you to do that self-assessment and make a determination on what you can do and what populations you can lift up and what progress you can make in this world. Because all of us have that ability because it took one drink at one bar to see one documentary for me to get where I am today. That one opportunity. So what opportunity are you going to be looking for and when will you say yes and start making a change? Thank you.